Hey guys, I wanted to talk about my experience at the Disrupt NY Hackathon this past weekend. Um, it was a conference where applications developers come together for 24 hours and create some sort of application. They can work in teams and I think some worked individually, but um, they only have that 24 or maybe it was 18 hour span uh, to create their application. Um, I went as a spectator on the second day, so um, during the second day, the developers will um, present their ideas to a wider audience, and anyone can show up. So I'm a total lay person. I know nothing about um, how to code or how to program or how to create applications. Um, I just wanted to talk about a few of the cool um, trends that I'm seeing from a developer's perspective. Um, these include logistics, wearables, payments, safety, um, and integration of the world around us. In the logistics category, two apps really stood out to me. One was called Spot, and it's basically an Uber for parking, where you use the GPS in your mobile device to help you find a free parking spot. Now, I think all these parking spots have to be registered in the Spot platform. And in any event, you find a spot, um, you claim it, and you take that spot, um, just like you would with Uber. And then when you leave that spot, you will use the application to notify that the spot free again. The second app concept that I really liked within the logistics category is Zombie, which is essentially a Snapchat for location. Um, so there are, I think, a lot of instances where you need to let someone know where you are, and that way they can come find you. And I believe it will be integrated with some sort of map system so that um, you can get directions directly there. So another trend that I noticed um, in the hacks that were presented on that second day is safety. Um, there were a lot of applications that uh, kind of tried to address the issues of safety, especially in New York City or any city where there's a lot of people and um, the potential for kidnapping or some sort of violence um, is there. So one app uh, which unfortunately I forget the name for, tries to um, give you anonymous ways to ping people to let them know that you're in danger. Um, basically this app, once you activate it, goes to a blank screen, so it'll just look like your phone is off, but it'll text all of your emergency contacts that you have to, of course, specify ahead of time, and it will record and um, give live updates of your location and um, record both audio and video. So this is a great way for you to kind of um, anticipate and prepare for any huge, unlikely, but scary events that might happen to you. I know that as someone who runs um, at night in New York City, this would be really useful for me. Because I want to explore different neighborhoods, but it scares me because I don't know how to... Sorry about that, guys. That was my alarm clock letting me know to wake up. <laughs> anyway, the, um, the other category, the third category, sorry, that I really um, saw a lot of apps for is around the concept of connectedness. That is connectedness with the world around us, with the people around us. Um, and one that, there were two applications that I thought were really cool in this area, in connectedness. Um, one is called WhoYou, and it's an intercompany um, trivia and I think messaging platform that um, can run analytics by asking um, coworkers about other coworkers and um, really show how connected the company is. This would be a great way to kind of, I guess, integrate into your company life to make it a more connected.
Connected, the second app that really addressed connectedness um, is actually not connectedness to people, but rather connectedness to plants. It's developed by two 15-year-old applications developers, and it's called Follow Plants. And like the name says, you follow plants. Um, I think, sorry, my, um, for some reason my uh, webcam cut off, but Follow Plants is a application where you um, are connected to a local farm and it will track the growth of certain produce so that you know exactly how they're grown and then when you buy them to eat them presumably you'll know exactly um, what it went through to become what it is. Now I thought it was really cool because first of all they were 15 years old. I mean at 15 I could not do anything much less code this complicated concept. Secondly, I think it's truly a trend where people do want to know where their food comes from and how it was grown, how it was processed. The third major theme that I saw based on what developers were presenting is payments, especially mobile payments. Um, <clears throat> the first is Studer, which is an app that um, kind of serves as a Tinder for, uh, for connecting students with tutors, exactly what it sounds like. And um, it, it can connect you by subject and by location. And then once the session is over, it will automatically push um, whatever you owe the tutor for the time that they were with you to Venmo so that it will clear automatically. The second one that I thought was really cool is Moolami, which is um, a crowdfunding app based on the people around you. So say you need money for something right now, you don't want to go to the ATM to, you know, pay the ATM fee of $3 or whatever it is, or maybe you just don't have access to an ATM at the moment or cash through any other means. You can go on this app, it will search, um, it will send out your request and search for someone who is able to give you the money that you need. And then it um, it clears through some sort of cloud platform. I thought that's really cool. There were so many times where I'm like, man, I really want food from that food truck, but I am not willing to walk five blocks to an ATM and pay $3 to, just to get 20 bucks. So um, definitely see a lot of application in this application. And the third payments app that I thought was really neat is Split. And it definitely addresses an issue that um, we have around eating, which has become a very social phenomenon. So I love to go out to eat with my friends, but often when the bill comes, we have trouble splitting it. And we'll sit there and try to rack up all the middle school algebra or whenever we took algebra, elementary school algebra to settle a bill that really can be settled with a single click of a camera with this app. Um, so with Split you just take a picture of the receipt and you enter in some information and it automatically splits the bill for you. Not only that, but it clears it for you through Venmo. The final big theme that I saw based on the presentations is wearables. A lot of the apps um, were to be used on the Apple Watch and a lot of them are um, web-based or mobile-based but have applications with Apple Watches, um, which I think is super cool because the Apple Watch just came out and they're already able to create hacks for it. Um, I really enjoyed going to the conference. My friend Cass made me go with her, and I'm so glad that she did because it really um, was a way for me to see from an application developer's side what the major themes in, um, in software are. And also, it was a way for me to really step outside my comfort zone and learn about a field that I didn't know a whole lot about before. So based on these, um, I would say that I'm so excited for the next generation 
of apps that are coming out. It looks like a tremendous lineup that solves a lot of issues, not just around, you know, city living. Um, so definitely excited, um, excited to see some of these become real products, excited to see them grow networks, and maybe excited to participate in their funding if that's um, something that comes up. So thank you for watching. Um, I hope you all enjoyed my rundown of the major themes that I saw at the Disrupt NY Hackathon. And leave all your comments below, and I look forward to interacting with you.